Hey, welcome back guys and thanks for stopping by. Today we are talking about long exposure. Today I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with long exposure photography on the Mavic Air. Let's get started. So why long exposure photography? Well, it just presents a different way to be creative using your photographs. It's a way to capture motion blur in the photograph itself instead of just being a static shot. It's a way to step up your Instagram game and it's a nice tool to have in your toolkit of options to use when you're out in the field. So let's check it out. Okay guys, so there are three variables that you need to consider when you're talking about getting the correct exposure for long exposure photography. And this goes with any type of photography. So one is the aperture value, two is the ISO, and three is the shutter speed. Now with the aperture value, with the Mavic Air, it's set at 2.8, so you can't change that at all. So just throw that out the window. The ISO value, you wanna have that as low as possible. So keep that set at 100. The third variable that you can change is the shutter speed, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. And that has everything to do with the long exposure photography on the Mavic Air. So let's get into this. Okay guys, so you might be asking yourself, what gear do I need to shoot long exposure photography? I mean, you're looking at just basic long exposure with, you know, on a tripod, you're gonna need four things. One is the camera itself, two is the ND filters, three is a remote shutter, so you can take the shot without touching the camera, and fourth is to have a tripod. So this presents a little bit of a challenge when you're flying a quadcopter in the air, but you still have the same components. You have the Mavic Air, which is the camera. You have the ND filters, I'll show you what I have here. I got these from Freewell. These are long exposure ND filters. Starts at 128, goes to 256, and then a 400 ND filter along with the ND1000 and the ND2000. So that has you covered from an ND filter perspective. We'll test these out and see which one works the best. And then the fourth option is you also you still have the need to have a tripod. So this puts a, a little bit of a challenge into the picture. We do have tripod mode, and so the challenge will be, you know, how well will the tripod mode hold up and, and having zero movement in your photograph and being able to capture movement in your photograph. Coming right up. So let's find out using the best shot from each one of the ND filters from Freewell, and let's find out. In place of the old one. So I just did the, the ND 128. So I did a series of different shots from, I don't know, quarter of a second all the way up to one second. And I would say after about a half a second exposure, it's too exposed. And so in broad daylight, the 128, you're gonna have to use, you're gonna have to use exposures of half second or less. So let's go up to the next one. The second test was with the 256. I started at about an eighth of a second and went all the way up to two seconds. And I would say just over one second is when it started to become overexposed. So again, broad daylight, high noon, 256, you're gonna be able to go up to maybe one second exposure to capture the blur. So that depends on, on what you're actually focused on, whether it's water, traffic. The third ND filter in this long exposure pack, I used the ND400. On this one, I got up to about a second and a half before it was overexposed. Again, broad daylight, lots of light out here from the sky, glare on the water. This is about the brightest you could really expect aside from being in the desert. So you would get much different results if you were taking these photos at sunset or sunrise. But you know, with these three, I would say anywhere in the you know one and a half second and under time, uh, range, you're pretty good to go I'm longer than that. If you're trying to do a longer exposure than that, these are not gonna be bright, uh, dark enough, at least in highlight situations. Sunset, sunrise, these would be awesome. 
so I would probably go with these. Um, remains to be seen when I actually see the actual photos, how much blur will be captured. Okay, so I just did the ND1000 on the Mavic Air and I was able to get up to a three second exposure, started at an eighth of a second, got up to three second exposure before the, you know, on the histogram, the exposure was basically out of range. So that's pretty good. I mean, I, I mean, you have a three second exposure in broad daylight where the camera is doing nothing but just soaking in all that light. So that's, I mean, that's a huge amount of filtering going on with this ND1000. So really interested to see what the pictures look like. All right, so I just did the ND2000 and I was able to get up to an eight second exposure in broad daylight. Really excited to see what this can, can do during the sunrise and sunset periods. And I really wanna see what these photos look like in terms of the stillness, you know, while the Mavic Air is in tripod mode to see if that is still enough. So we'll just see how that goes in post and I'll let you guys know. So guys, in conclusion, I would say that the ND filters from Freewell for long exposure are excellent. They work all the way up to ND2000. However, it totally depends on the Mavic Air and how still you can keep the Mavic Air in flight. So you have to be in tripod mode and you have to have a situation where there's not a lot of wind or you can't have your exposure that long. So my, my thought is most people are gonna be successful in the half second up to three second range. I would say up, anything over three seconds is gonna be pretty hard to get a crystal clear image aside from the part that you want to have the blur. If you lock down a tripod on a camera, that can be perfectly still, but it, with the Mavic Air, you know, let's be honest, the ability for the Mavic Air to be to hold still is, is amazing, but it can't be perfectly still like you would have on a mounted tripod on the ground. Even if it's just hovering a few centimeters here and there, that's gonna show up, I think, in anything over three seconds, and maybe less than that. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found what you were looking for. Let me know if you have any questions about this. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have or comments that you have just to see what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.